Hello and welcome to Top Quadrant's Quick Grok video. In today's video we will explore, explore crosswalks. What are crosswalks? It's a set of links between two asset collections, typically between two taxonomies or two reference data sets, uh, possibly between two glossaries. Why would you put those links in a crosswalk as opposed to just creating relationships within an asset collection. You do that when you have two independent asset collections that um, represent either authority files or reference data sets or taxonomies for the same type of things. For example, you have two different sets of country codes and you want to crosswalk them. Each, each of those uh, code sets is used independently. You may have data that is categorized using one of them. You may also have some data that is categorized using another one of them. And um, you want to cross-reference them in order to bring this data together. And that's uh, how crosswalks work. So let's uh, switch to tab right edge and uh, take a look at the set of country codes that I have here. These are FIPS country codes. Um, it's a US federal government um, set of country codes that uh, are not really used anymore because um, a federal government transitioned to the use of ISO country codes, but they were used in the past and there are still quite a number of data sources that are using them, for example, CIA Factbook. So we will uh, crosswalk FIPS country codes to the ISO country codes that we have as another reference data set. Um, I could, of course, click on this plus sign and uh, select crosswalk as I created, but I'll show you a different method. Uh, there is a panel that shows all crosswalks that the current asset collection participates in. And currently I don't have any because um, I have not done any crosswalks for FIPS country codes, but um, I could use this panel also to create a new crosswalk. Uh, when I create a crosswalk, I'll um, specify the from collection and the to collection, but since I am creating it from this, um, reference data set. I don't have to talk about from, I only have to select the two. So uh, I'm going to call it FIPS2 um, ISO country crosswalk. And um, I could enter a description if I wanted to. So the from, from graph is already selected. I could select a, a class of my uh, resources or assets, and the two class will be the two graph will be ISO country codes, and the two class are ISO country. Uh, the crosswalk is created at this point, it's empty. I could click um, this link to go there, and you see all the FIPS country codes on the left hand side and then nothing on the right hand side. This is where my uh, matches on uh, maps go to. Um, I could start um, finding matches by just um, looking them up like this and then adding a match. So that's a, that's a manual process and note that I could enter a comment for each of those uh, mappings as well. Or I could uh, ask Tab Red Edge to automatically suggest likely matches. This is available on this um, problem and suggestions panel. And the mode I'm going to run in is I'm not going to use this to run any validation. I'm just going to uh, do suggestions. And for now, I am going to focus on the 100% confidence type of suggestions. So I've got um, a number of suggestions for uh, matching. And 
all of those look good. I specifically selected 100%, so I don't really have to review them. I could just um, apply top, top suggestions. Um, note that um, note the name of this predicate or property that will be used to create the links. This is a default one. Um, crosswalk close match. When you create the crosswalk, this is uh, Tabrite Edge will assume that that's uh, the property you will use to connect um, entities in your uh, in your crosswalk. You could uh, change it by going to the Manage tab and specify some other property to use in a crosswalk. But it's always the same property. All the links are. Um, uh, put in place using the same property. So let me um, just uh, apply all top suggestions. And the links are uh, now showing up. And as you could see, not, not everything got linked because um, I only picked 100% suggestions. So now I could do a next step and um, uh, let's say do it again, but this one this time look at 70%. Not that. And now I will be more careful. I will be looking at them one by one to see uh, whether I want to apply them or not. You know, for example, in case of Bahamas, I'll probably want. In case of Baker Island, I really uh, don't want to do that. Um, so for Baker Island, um, actually, in FIPS, it has a code. In ISO, there is no separate code for Baker Island because it's managed as um, maintained as part of US. Um, minor islands. So let me show you. I have I actually have a spreadsheet where um, you know all this information is there. So ISO includes this with U.S. minor outlying um, islands, and that's what I'm going to do. States. And put, put that on for now. And uh, here I've entered the comment. And as we add a match, we actually could expand this information and see um, what we know about this matched uh, resource. Yes, my minor outlying islands. Actually, um, there is a number of um, islands that match to this, and I am going to find one of them um, to show you uh, to show you that the mapping could be not just one to one, but uh, in fact, it could be many to many. So in this case, I am also going to match Holland Island to the same thing. Now, another um, option that we have, you, ju you just saw me um, filtering on this field. So if I want to find something specific, I could uh, use this row to filter. I could also sort. So if I want to find um, everything that has no mappings yet, I could uh, sort here. And go back to the first page. So we see everything that has not been mapped yet. And I could switch uh, from this layout, where the first uh, two columns represent the from, and uh, a third one represents two, I could actually switch them around like this. So this way, I could look at it from the other perspective. So if I want to find the US minor islands, we see that it mapped to two. And we could look at the information about, about this, and we could do um, 
sourcing here to find everything in the ISO country codes that hasn't been matched yet. So this gives you an overview of how you could do um, mapping automatically and also how you could do mappings um, manually by finding the right uh, resource and adding a match. You could also import your mappings if you already have them in a, in a spreadsheet, for example. That's one of the options. You could import crosswalk from a spreadsheet. And if you look at the spreadsheet that I have, this is uh, it's very close to the format that's needed. Um, what's required for this for the import is that both uh, from and to classes have primary keys defined, and uh, my spreadsheet should have only two columns. Um, it should have a, a from column and a to column. So in this case, my ISO countries have um, a primary key of two uh, alphabetic characters, ISO codes. So this would be my first column. And then my FIPS countries have a primary key of the FIPS code. And this represents the FIPS code. This would be my second column. So I would have a spreadsheet with just uh, those two columns. The column that you see as C would be A, and the column which, that you see as B would stay as B. Uh, one thing that's important as you prepare such spreadsheets for import. You see in this spreadsheet, I have a dash if there is no mappings. Don't do that, just leave it as blank. Anytime there is no mappings, just leave it as blank. And of course, if there are multiple mappings, then you just repeat in row uh, multiple times. Uh, with this, this, let's return to tab right edge and let's uh, go back to our FIPS country codes. So now we have one crosswalk and there could be multiple crosswalks if uh, FIPS was mapped to, to something else. If we were to go to the ISO countries, and actually I can conveniently go to ISO countries like this. Uh, we also see that same crosswalk because it participates in it as a map to asset, asset collection. And if we um, select anything in the, uh, in the, let's say, FIPS country codes that has been mapped, and then uh, we click on the crosswalk, the mapping will already be pre-selected for us. So we will always know what it's mapped to. Nevertheless, you may want to include this crosswalk into, uh, into your asset collection so that you see this information uh, right on the form uh, about Argentina. So the way you do that is, of course, um, in a standard way, you go to the settings, go to includes, and you find this crosswalk. Right, so now let's go to Argentina. And um, the data is here, but you don't see it on the form. Uh, let me show you that the data is actually here. If you look at the if you look at the source panel, you see that the mapping is here. It is not shown on the form because in my ontology where FIPS countries are defined. I don't have a property shape for this matching predicate. Uh, the moment I add it, the information will show up on the form. Let me do this now. I'm going to uh, the ontology that defines the class FIPS country. And I could just um, add a predicate manually, uh, add a property manually by saying uh, create relationship, or I could um, let Tab Right Edge create it for me automatically by pointing it to data and asking it to find any property for which there is no um, property de declaration. And this option is available under Modify menu 
It's called der derived property shape from instances. I'm going to tell it uh, what instances to look at. So peeps country codes. And I'm going to put it in uh, name and type section. So you see it created a shape for close match. And now if I go back to my FIPS country codes and refresh to let um, it catch up with my declarations, we now see FIPS codes for whatever I have mapped. So that uh, pretty much concludes our um, uh, demo of uh, crosswalks. And of course, you could use information here in in services, so you could create it for it, access it through Sparkle, through GraphQL, etc. There are also uh, a few built-in crosswalk web services that facilitates process of finding matches from one code to another using crosswalks. Thank you for watching this video.